Southampton Graduate Medicine is without doubt the best graduate medical course I've ever enrolled on. Situated right on the south coast of England, this Russell Group Uni is surely an excellent option for you graduate medicine hopefuls. Each year over a thousand people apply, they interview almost 200 people for the course and give out around 80 offers for 48 places. The purpose of this video is just to go stepwise through the application process to Southampton Graduate Medicine and hopefully to show you that it is possible to get onto one of these super competitive uh, accelerated graduate medicine courses. What are you telling me? My name is Marius Hugh and I am back on YouTube with a bang. I'm sitting here now as a final year medical student. I wanted to come back on YouTube just to finish the project that I started at the start of last year, throw some more content into the graduate medicine vacuum that exists on YouTube, hopefully help some people, inspire some people um, to follow their dreams and get onto graduate entry medicine in the UK. So firstly, let's talk about how the graduate entry course at Southampton, also called the BM4, is set up. Southampton does the same thing as BART's where the first two years are the bespoke accelerated portion of the course and then they put you back into the, the five year course in its fourth year. Sorry, that was well confusing. Effectively, they condense the first three years of the standard program down into two. Um, they deliver it in a more intense schedule so that you cover it as a graduate on this accelerated course within the first two years. So yeah, obviously this course is slightly more intense than the undergraduate course. They have a shorter amount of time to teach you in um, so they keep the pace quite high, the, the topics turn over quite quickly um, and yeah you just have to try and stay on top of things. But yeah in my opinion this pace was perfectly fine for me and all my colleagues have got through fine. When I was in first and second year I managed to keep up playing uh, semi-professional rugby. I was commuting up and down from Southampton to London literally three times a week, eight hours in the car on the M3 and yeah I managed to somehow bang a distinction which is top five uh, in the year. So yeah, I think with any of these graduate medicine courses, it's just about being efficient with your time, um, studying effectively and probably studying throughout the year. So how does Southampton actually teach the course? Because this can vary between different graduate entry medical schools. So Southampton teach their course in this thing called a case-led format, which you may have come across, similar to a problem-based learning. Basically, each week just has a theme. Taking the example of acute kidney injury, what they'll do is they'll create a case around someone that presents with an acute kidney injury. They'll make it sound realistic as if you're just reviewing this patient for the first time they'll then give you all the investigations and the blood work um, that you need to be able to interpret you'll get together in a group of about eight of your colleagues you'll go through the case for the week and and there'll be a bunch of learning outcomes there'll probably be yeah around 10 learning outcomes covering different aspects of the medicine that they want you to learn you'll go away from that Monday session with a couple of these learning outcomes that are your responsibility um, to cover and essentially to produce uh, a teaching session for the Friday graduate group um, where you'll actually deliver and teach the rest of your colleagues that particular part of the, the curriculum. So yeah, everyone works together. There's like a real sense of, of altruism in the course. Everyone's kind of helping each other get through those like intense first two years of the course um, and get everything down, pass your exams. So yeah, personally having not done a lot of group work like at Durham when I was doing biomedical science, um, I found this a really refreshing way to learn, especially coming into it a little bit older. I think um, you're a bit more, you know, interested um, and you're not afraid to show that you're interested. Obviously no one's gonna judge you because everyone's, everyone's a nerd on the course. So yeah, it's a good thing. So yeah, basically you just rinse and repeat this weekly cycle where you're meeting up on a Monday, you divvy up learning outcomes, you meet again on a Friday, you move on to the next topic, you rinse and repeat that that process for the first like year and a half. There's two like multiple choice question um, preclinical exams like during that first year and a half, the second of which is, you know, right at the end of the year and a half. Um, so that kind of caps off your preclinical experience. And after that, you all go en masse to Basingstoke Hospital where you do, uh, where you start your clinical rotations you'll do six weeks of surgery six weeks of medicine and six weeks of general practice and yeah trust me this is such a good part of the course because you've taken your preclinical exam in January and you know that you're not going to have another exam until the end of next year but yeah at least for that second half of, of second year you can take your foot off the gas a little bit and just you know relax enjoy the placement enjoy just hanging out with your mates after these first two years all the medicine courses that run at Southampton so there's there's three that I can think of there's the the widening widening access course which is the BM6 it's called um, there's the standard course which is the BM5 and then there's the BM4 which is the four-year course which is the one I'm on all of these courses are kind of running parallel to each other and after 
your second year on the graduate course, they all combine and then you finish off the last two years all together. Oh yeah, I forgot about the BMEU, which is just a sly um, European course. Southampton has some random link to uh, a university in Germany called Kassel or Kessel or something. I apologize that that was slightly rambly, but that's effectively how uh, the course at Southampton is structured. But what we want to know now, of course, is how the hell do we get in? How do we qualify for this course? So what academic qualifications do you need? So essentially you don't need any specific A-levels for this course. First thing you need to do is get an upper second class honors degree, at least in any subject. Southampton, I think, will flat out reject anyone that's got a, a Desmond Tutu in their first degree. But equally, they don't display any bias towards people that have got firsts. And they also don't display any bias towards people that have got, you know, biosciences degrees, you know, compared to any other degree. So I guess what I mean to say is that when you read on Southampton's website, at least, that it's a minimum of a 2-1 that you need to qualify, they actually mean all you need is a 2-1. You know, you, you don't actually need a first. Yeah, you might be thinking, yeah, yeah obviously that's what they mean. But but the reason I say it is because Bart's, for example, strongly prefer people with firsts, although they say that all you need is a minimum of 2-1. And you actually look at the credentials of the people that have got into Bart's in the last few years, like 98% of them have uh, first class degrees in their undergrad, yeah. And once you've got a 2-1 in any subject, what you're next gonna need to do is take the UCAT. A different graduate entry medical schools use different entrance exams to standardize all the people that apply there. And Southampton have just decided to use the UCAT Cat. You basically sit this test in one of those dusty, like Pearson View uh, driving theory test centers. Like, you take the test and they give you, you literally get a printout of your result immediately after. They, they slide it across the table to you, like face down, and you're just like, oh no. What I'm actually getting at with this, with this long winded anecdote is that you get your result for the UCAT long before you, you actually come to apply. The UCAT is so important to the graduate medical schools that actually use it. You just need to get your result and just be thinking like where can I actually apply where do I actually stand a chance of getting in with this UCAT score the best way to find out whether or not your score is actually going to get you an interview is not weirdly is not actually on the entry requirement section of each graduate medical school the best way to work out whether or not your UCAT score is going to be good enough is essentially to ask the question what was the lowest score for a candidate who made it to the interview stage in previous cohorts that have applied to Southampton graduate medicine now, some universities are so coy with this information I don't understand why I think this is basically the most reliable way to, to work out whether or not your score is going to be good enough and yeah you literally have to incite legislation to get this information you have to go on to this website called what do they know.com you're, you're like getting access to this crucial uh, very informative information by like using the Freedom of Information Act or whatever, I don't even know, it's just crazy to me. I was researching all this for my kind of graduate entry medicine guide that I'm trying to write, um, but can't seem to find the motivation for it at the moment. But anyway, I made this table. If I could draw your attention to the top row in the first instance, so this is the threshold score for non-Southampton graduates. So in 2020 it was 2930, and in 2021 it was the same at 2930. So yeah, in the year that I took the UCAT, I got 2960, so I was over the threshold, and I, I yeah, I would have got an interview in 2020 and 2021. Um, assuming that I've hit those other minimum requirements like getting a 2-1, etc. You need to look at this cutoff threshold score, but crucially, you also need to look at whether or not the university uses the situational judgment test section of the UCAT and whether or not they bias, you know, people that have got band ones and twos, for example, um, and maybe just say, if you've got a band three or four, like you're gone, you're, you ain't getting through to the interview. Certain medical schools use the situational judgment test. I asked Southampton, using this freedom of information legislation, whether or not they use the situational judgment test, uh, and they told me that, you know, Situational judgment test is not used as part of the selection process for this particular course. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really know what to make of that. If I, if I was you, I would not take that to mean you can neglect um, your preparation for the situational judgment test. I'd really try and get a band one or two. Let us now address this sly little second column. This is a sly one. This is a sly one. But yeah, this column shows you in 2020 and 2021 the threshold score for Southampton graduates. And as you can see, it's a lot lower. So 2790 
uh, in 2020 and 2780 in 2021. Essentially the BM4 graduate medicine course at Southampton ring fence 20 places, um, 20 interview spots for Southampton graduates. So essentially what they'll do is they'll take everyone with an undergraduate from Southampton They'll, they'll separate them and then they'll then rank them um, as their own cohort by their UCAT and select the top 20 of those and give them an interview. Competition is, is much smaller, um, there's a much smaller pool um, against which your UCAT is going to be compared so you don't necessarily need to you know, get in the top 5% top 10% as kind of everyone else does with a degree from any other uni. Yeah, I think this is like a really good option and should probably be advertised more like I can see a scenario where you know a school leaver they've got a place for medicine um, they miss their grades like you might as well just wang in an application for Southampton with that long view of going to Southampton for graduate entry medicine and safe in the knowledge that you know it's going to be much easier for you to get into Southampton graduate medicine than basically the rest of the country this is definitely something to bear in mind um, it's, it's definitely not something that I was aware of when I was leaving school not that I was considering doing medicine when I was leaving school but you know no one told me about this this option through Maybe it didn't exist back in like whenever I finished my A-levels, 2012 or whatever, but yeah, it's a good one to be aware of. If you've got over this threshold score in the UCAT, then you'll probably be invited to interview so long as you've satisfied the other basic requirements. So how is the interview conducted? So traditionally, Southampton used a panel style interview. The panel interview at Southampton is where you sit across from two interviewers, which will probably be two members of staff or a staff and a student or something. You sit across them for 20 minutes, they've got your personal statement in front of them um, and they've got some standard uh, criteria that they want to mark you on. Essentially they're just trying to get to know you as a person uh, and assess you in a kind of conversational style. Although the interviews have a structure um, and a loose skeleton for how they're going to conduct the interview, it's slightly more personalised than the multiple mini interview style that for example Warwick does. The second bit of this interview was traditionally a group task where they ask you a, a kind of debatable question, one that's going to incite different opinions from different people and they ask you to kind of hash it out as a group of like eight or so interviewees. Yeah the reason that they do this group task I think at Southampton is because literally in that first two years that is how they structure the course that each week you're getting together all the time in your little small groups um, and they want people that are going to be you know productive members of a group and be able to chat things out work things out together during covid unfortunately they moved uh, the interviews to online so they actually scrapped this group task um, and I think they elongated the, the panel interview slightly. Yeah, and probably approximated your ability to work in a group based on your like communication skills and how you came across as a person. I'm, I'm pretty sure they're gonna bring this back in though in the future, probably next year to be honest, um, for, for the 2023 cycle. So yeah, it, it's worth preparing a little bit for the group task. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Like, like my interview was, was pretty chilled. It comes across like they want normal people who are interested, engaged with it, and gonna be, you know, well-rounded, good doctors. Once you make it to the interview stage, literally it's all in your hands. Um, the decision on whether or not you're gonna get a place hangs on your performance on that day. They're not gonna look at your UCAT score again. They're not gonna look at what degree you've got. Um, you know, if you've got a first class degree in medicinal chemistry from Oxford, that's out the window. It's all on the day you have to perform well. So yeah, that is basically it for Southampton. I'm gonna do another video where I talk a little bit more um, about the Southampton interview and give you some general tips. If I were to sum up what I've said so far, Southampton runs kind of a, a small to medium sized graduate entry school with 48 spots on offer. It's taught using case-based learning and the bespoke portion lasts two years. To qualify, you need to be getting a 2-1 in any subject. You need to take the UCAT and get 2,930. And the situational judgment test probably doesn't matter. Or if you want the sly route into graduate medicine at Southampton, you should go and do an undergrad at Southampton uh, and then get around 2,780. The interview is a panel style interview with a group task um, unless it's still online, in which case it's probably just going to be a panel interview. That is it. Thank you for being here today. It's quite enjoyable to be back filming videos, to be honest. I've sort of missed it in a certain way. The next one, we're going to talk about some, some general interview tips for Southampton. So see you in the next one, I hope. And cheers.